All right, we're joined by none other than the real deal, Evander Holyfield. Evander, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Good to see you, Evander. How you feeling? Everything's good. Okay. First of all, thank you for being on this uh, special episode we're doing, being with the COVID. We are not able to have our annual dinner for the charity foundation that I run that helps so many people that are in bad shape, that are in need. You've come to them twice. You've uh, flown in on two separate occasions. I want to thank you again uh, for doing that. The people love you when you come in. We have a 1,000 people at our annual fundraiser dinner for the foundation, and everybody loves seeing you. And you help us do so many things, as all the other celebrities that come and join us when we do this fundraiser. You help us fly kids into other states that need a special treatment program uh, that their state doesn't provide. We, we even pay for chemotherapy for some children where their insurance doesn't pay for a particular drug. Uh, and the family is in a situation where they have nowhere else to go or we put up handicap ramps or handicap bathrooms uh, for a child with muscular dystrophy with a single mom that does not have the means to do that in their apartment, in their home. So again, before we start this, I just want to again thank you for being part of that effort, part of uh, doing what you do to come in and uh, offer yourself to help us raise money for so many people that are in terrible situations. So right now, I think all the, our fans out there, your fans out there, the first thing I'd like to ask you about your career is how much of an influence did your mom have in your career in forming Evander the Real Deal Hollyfield into the great champion that you were? Well, my mother pretty much was it because, uh, you know, people come up, you, you come up in life, you don't choose your parents, you don't choose your neighborhood, your color. You know, there's a lot of things you don't choose. But, you know, my mother, I was the youngest at nine. And so my mother had a heart attack when I was a kid. So my mama was there for me. And so she, she gave me all the inspiration and the knowledge and understanding. But I guess, but the most important thing, it was like self-discipline. You know, I, I couldn't act like all the other kids. My mother told me, I'm your mom, I'm not their mom. And so I, I actually thought that because whatever neighborhood you live in, you, you act like everybody else, you know, but it, that wasn't going to work with my mom. So in other words, no excuses <laughs> with, with your mom. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> yeah. Something that we need in this world today, more accountability. Would you agree with that? I, I definitely agree with it because I, I know accountability is the, is the key to everything. Because my mother used to tell me, uh, if you don't get no bad habits, you ain't got to worry about breaking them. <laughs> so, you know, it's a lot of things that I, I didn't do because she didn't let me do it. And so I didn't never have to break the bad habits that a lot of other people had to break. That's a hell of a way to put it and a correct way to put it. And hopefully a lot of people will take from that what they should take from it. My other question, I would say, Evanda, every fighter on their way up, I mean, I, I laid it out pretty good. You were the greatest cruiserweight of all time. Uh, should have been an Olympic gold medalist on your way to that before that was stolen from you. Uh, great three-time heavyweight champ. There's always a, a fight that forges you, that really brings you to that next level, that answers the questions that have to be answered in your mind of that you, you belong, that you can be special. Out of all these fights on your way up, what was the one fight that you would say formed you for the future? I would say the fight with Dwight Muhammad Kwawi, my first my first championship fight as a cruiserweight. You know, I weighed about 184 pounds, and I was going with a guy who had been champion two times, and you know, and I had never been past eight rounds, and so I go into a eight round to 15 round, and uh, I made it. Yeah, you sure did. That was a great fight. I knew you were going to say that, by the way. 
Uh, I, I, I knew that was going to be the one because you could see it as you watched the fight that it was a fight that took you to new places uh, that let you know that you belonged in those places, that you could handle things that you really had no way of knowing whether or not you could handle them up until that time. Who's the hardest puncher you ever faced? Uh, George Foreman. Wow. Big George, baby. Yeah. Big he, George. <laughs> he, <laughs> he could bang. He could bang. Ken, you, you jump in there. Of, of, the, of all the titles you've won, was, which was the most satisfying? Unifying all the cruiserweight titles or capturing the heavyweight title? Of course, uh, capturing the heavyweight title. But actually, I, I, guess, I guess the most important was when I beat Mike Tyson. I would agree. And the reason why that was so special because, you know, I grew up in the ghetto just like everybody else. and But I was that person that my mom, my mama was there for me. And, you know, I couldn't curse because everybody else cursed. I couldn't do the things that everybody do. And so everybody just tried to say I was a good at two shoe, but you know, but because my mama was there and because I got caught in everything that I'd done, so I didn't try to do nothing wrong. And so when it came down to boxing, everybody thought I was a good at two shoe. They thought I was, I felt that I was better than people because, because I didn't curse and I didn't get in trouble like them. I, you know, I, I never got to jail, never done any, none of that stuff. I didn't have these bad habits, and but, and you know, you know, my brothers and sisters. Now you got you got to understand. I'm the youngest at not. so my brothers and sisters. Now, my mom didn't have a heart attack when they was a kid. You know, now my mom worked ten to ten, so, so, they always got in trouble. <laughs> I never did get in trouble, and you know, so, sometimes you know, family members start saying, you know, we're going to wait till you fight Mike. You see what's going to happen then. And so, you know, uh, and I had to prove that I can handle him. And when I did that, I kind of get, that kind of got everything off my shoulders. Isn't it funny to think when you say everyone thought I was a goody two shoes because everyone to you at the time was your little tiny universe and wherever you were living, but to the broader public, myself included, I would never describe Evander Holyfield as a goody two shoes. I'd describe him as a fighter, a man. And that's what you showed when you showed up. And Teddy always says it. Evander was too much man for Tyson. Well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't afraid of anybody. That's obvious. Only person I was afraid of was my mom. <laughs> I, was, I couldn't hit her back. <laughs> so, uh, so, so uh, you, know, you know, I had a great career. Yes, you did. You had a, you had a great career and a great mom. Uh, yeah. To to make sure that you had a great career, who's who's who was the toughest fight that you ever had with? Well, I, I the most difficult way is the white mom at Kwawe. Okay, because of the time of it. You know, I'm telling you, know, I, I lost 15, 15 pounds in that fight, and I never went fifteen round, and I had to go fifteen round, and so that was the hardest fight, but. But other than him, but my second toughest, I would say Lennox Lewis, because you know he was he was a bigger and he and he and he, you know, I was good fighting guys who was uh, guys that kind of bully guys that gonna try to just come to me. I was good with guys like this, but Lennox Lewis was one of the fighters that you know, you know, he 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 going he think long. He, it, it, it's a kind of the fight kind of get boring sometimes. When like this, but people who that was the fight was very competitive and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I was good in that. But he, Lennox was that guy that that he was a thinker. Yeah, he was, and he was a big guy. Um, you know that brings me into. I mean, you beat big guys. You beat him. You beat Rick, Riddick Bow uh, in a rematch. You were fighting everybody that was bigger than you. Today, the heavyweights have gone to even a another dimension of size. I mean, you got guys like Fury, six foot seven, two hundred seventy pounds. You know, Joshua, six five. You know, two forty, two forty five. 
And Lennox was a big man. And obviously you were able to step up and conquer that. If you were around today, would you be able to handle guys like Fury? I mean, how would you deal with guys like Fury and uh, Joshua with their size? Well, I, I felt that I would have done well because the fact that the matter we had a, we have a better amateur program than there. We uh, we had good coaches, and like I just said, you know, you only as good as as you know the coaches that who training you and uh, the amateur program that you come up in. I'm telling you know I'm telling you, uh, you know in, in the '80s and the '90s was wasn't the some of the best fighters that ever been because we had a good amateur program. It's kind of kind of faded after uh, Howard Cosell left. Was Pat Nappy one of your coaches back in the day with the amateurs, sure with the Olympics? Yeah, he was a good yes, man. He was, he was uh, you're right. Uh, I, I speak on that often, Evander, that we don't have the trainers, the teachers, the coaches. We don't have the right people developing our amateur programs anymore and especially our Olympic programs so I agree with you 100% who right now in your estimation is the best heavyweight in the world and why well you you you, you I would you have to go with uh Tyson Fury because I mean, it's proven and you know I'm you know you know he's a guy that you know get overweight he you know he, he he do he do difficult things but he's he's a good fighter though he's a good fighter and and it was just like i was i was surprised when he when he when he when he he, he, he stopped my man uh but you know but but guy with a lot of heart and you know family a family thing that he's been doing for a long time and, and he's smart what do you think about the Roy Jones Tyson, whatever it is, uh, event, uh, <laughs> exhibition, whatever? Well, I, I, I think I'm going to use exhibition and, is, and you know, um, I, I hope to see, you know, I hope both of them do, do well. Who do you favor? Well, you know, I think, I think if Tyson catch him, he's going to hurt him. But if he can't, but if Tyson can't catch him, it's going to be a, a lousy fight. Yeah, well, could you beat the winner? Well, you know, I, I, my whole thing, I wanted to do an exhibition. Now, see, I didn't want to go 12 and all this and, you know, four rounds. See, I'm, I'm that guy, my whole thing is I just want to do something short. But only reason why I wanted to do it, because the point of the matter is to tell, it, to tell the young people, being able to tell young people, if you take care of yourself. And so, you know, I have really have taken care of myself. There's a lot of bad habits I didn't have, you know, so my body, I'm still strong. I'm, I can still do pretty much, I can do 70% of the stuff I used to be able to do. I can do it. And like that, you know, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. You look good. Thank you. Yeah, you, you always look good. Evander, speaking about what you just talked about, teaching the young people, showing the young people to take care of themselves. Uh, in a, obviously, you're talking about how they take care of themselves in a physical way, but also that would encompass emotionally, mentally, uh, their lifestyles, uh, what they do. To, again, to your point, to what your mother taught you, to not have bad habits or to get rid of the bad habits. I want to, again, just say thank you because that's what this that's what this conversation and what this interview is all about. It's about helping people. It's about, you know, what the foundation that you were gracious enough, as I said before, to come twice to, where we had a dinner with a thousand people and a lot of celebrities raising money to help the the people that can't help themselves, that fall through the cracks, to be quite frank. And I just want to say thank you for sending the message out there of how important it is to help others, to help others that need the help, that, as I said earlier, can't always help themselves, and to set an example to everybody that 
it's important to help people if you can. And I'd just like to ask you, towards the closing of this, what it means to you to be able to do what you're doing now and when you've come to our foundation. And I know that you also do a lot of charitable work in your area to just speak about the importance of what that means to you. Well, it, it means a lot. I, I wouldn't be the person who I am if, if it wasn't people who had more than enough. You know, I, then the boys club cost a quarter to get in. I didn't even have a quarter and, and someone paid the quarter for me. And I, and you know, I actually used to think boxing was free because I never paid for anything. I found out of all them things, uh, the coach there, Mr. Morgan, he he paid for everything that I'd done. I act, I actually thought amateur boxing was free. I never paid anything. And so, you know, uh, so the big thing with me is to give back because, you know, I'm, you know, you know, I lived in the ghetto, but I lived a great life as a kid. I, you know, I went so many places. I traveled many places, and you know, you know, my parents, my parents didn't read, and so I, my father didn't read, my mom didn't read, and all this and stuff like this. And so I was, I was pretty much upset and embarrassed a lot of time because I didn't have the knowledge and I didn't have the money. But my mama said, just pay attention and work hard outwork people. And so, you know, so, you know, my job was to listen, follow direction, and not quit. Those are the three things that my mama told me that would allow me to be successful. Well, you listened to her, and I'm glad you listened to her. <laughs> and a lot of people out there are glad you listened to her. And thank you for that message. Thank you for giving that message to so many people out there, so many kids out there that are lost and that need to hear that message. Uh, and also for showing how important boxing can be to develop young people if it's done the right way, if it's in the right hands, in the right responsible coach's hands, where you can take a kid who might not be sure of where he's going and give him the confidence, give him the discipline, give him the tools that he needs to conquer the world, whether in the ring or outside the ring, and you're a perfect example of that, of why boxing, when done right, is important. It develops young people into men, and I just want to thank you for that, and thank you for the time that you gave us today. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, huge fan of everything you've done. Loved watching your career. Uh would love to see you fight the winner of Roy Jones and uh, Mike Tyson, if even in just an exhibition. Just love to get one more look at you in the ring. But, um, yeah, thanks. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Evander. Oh, thank you.